But let's talk about Sonoma. All right. So, um, no, so that there's no stage cautions at the road courses anymore. They made a change, and um, they took out the stage cautions. And this is, you know, I watched this race, and you know, I know that the product on the road courses has had the sim- has had similar struggles like we've seen on the short tracks, right? Yeah, the racing is not good. It's hard to pass. Yes. That's right. The cars, it's it's easy to pass. It is, I think. The problem is they all run the same lap time. Every lap, the whole field's within a half a tenth or, or a half a second of each other, right? So if the top ten are literally matching lap times, if not just a little bit different, there is no passing, right? They don't even catch each other. Um, so it's, it's a little frustrating. Uh, I'm not going to dive into that. We've talked about the short track package and, and the road course package. And, and, you know, if they want to make the racing better, NASCAR will work on it. Right. You know, we'll figure it out. Right. Right. We're not, we're not going to say There's work here. to be done. Yeah. They know it. We know it. Let's but, not, yeah. you know, one of the things that I was paying attention to was the lack of stage cautions. Now we have stage points. The stage comes to an end. And it was so weird. It happened in the um, Xfinity race as well. I'm looking on TV, right? I'm looking at the television, and it's counting the laps down to the end of the stage. And I'm just so programmed of the idea of a yellow getting ready to come out. And as that number gets counted down, and the stage <laughs> the stage ends, and the caution doesn't come out, and these points go wherever they go, uh, and they keep racing, and I, I, there's just this moment of, oh, okay, this is interesting. This is different. Not sure I'm loving it. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I love it. Uh, and and I'm not I'm not criticizing it. I don't think. Damn it, we got to change it back. I'm not aborting on this this change, but it was just a little. It was a little anticlimactic for the end of the stage, right? Usually we have a stage in, caution comes out. Yes, it takes forever for the caution to get taken care of, the stage to, you know, the, the cars to get back to green flag. The stage cautions are long. But there's another restart, and there's a little bit of action on that restart, uh, particularly in a race that needs a little action. It'd be good. But I guess, I guess what I'm saying, man, if the product on the track were better, I wouldn't care. But the product on the track at the road course was so dull that taking out that stage caution and and that moment of that that lull also that that sort of dull moment in the broadcast where there's you know okay we came to the end there goes the points to everybody and we're gonna keep on racing it just was a weird deal and and I don't know if anybody else felt it. You no, know, but yeah, it lacked that energy boost that we're accustomed to having. Yeah. I think it's just we're just used to it again. I mean, like, but we did not want these cautions, right? So I, I get it. I was ex- I was a bit excited about hey, okay, we're going to get rid of the cautions at the uh, at the road courses for the stage breaks. Yeah, this might be a good thing, right? Um, but I don't know. Damn, I was uh, I, I didn't think it made things better. I don't know if it hurt things at all, but I damn sure didn't think it made the racing. Or the race, or my experience watching it, any better? Maybe so. Did it not, though, introduce or bring back some strategic moves that some drivers were able to do that well, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do? Because it wasn't that like I've heard some drivers advocate of, for this type of yes. thing, and that's because they want to be able to make some strategic calls. They were, and it, it you know we it did change the strategy somewhat and opened it up a little bit. The guys. Uh, some guys were actually, you know, if you're leading the race coming to the end of stage one, um, if you don't, you know, you might be giving up an opportunity to win the race, particularly with this car that where the top 10 or more all run the same speed. If you, if you don't pit and everybody else cycles in front of you and you stay out to get the stage points, then you've basically thrown the race. You basically really limited your opportunities to win the race. And so, that would that was the that was the idea or the thought, but still, even though we're un, even though we stayed green, we had guys that were, you know, pitting, um, before the end of the stage, foregoing stage points 
to put themselves in that better position late in the race. Um, and and some guys lost a little track position due to it. I don't know. It there was some, you know, there was a big discrepancy in old tires and new tires. There was a couple seconds in speed getting out on the, you know, getting on the racetrack and trying to leapfrog. Uh the the Hendrick guys tried to do that early in the race. Uh, make up a lot of time on the top ten by pitting early. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I yeah. – I just didn't know if the race was that good. I, d- I wanted it to be good, and I wanted – I love, you know, Sonoma. Odd, odd for me to say that. I hated it I've for so many – I've never heard you say that before. Dude, I hated it for so many years. I was even a little jealous of the Xfinity guys. I was thinking, damn, that might have been a good race to run. I've got to run a couple, so that, well, i got to want to go somewhere and have a good time, and this this might have been pretty fun. But <laughs> Who are you? I don't even know anybody. I know, right? I don't know who I am. <laughs> I'm curious, though, is the broad opinion of this race – without stage breaks what did it feel like versus what you're what you're accustomed to um andrew you got an opinion on this you've been listening yeah what you think i don't know i I liked the idea that it opened the door for strategy and i feel like if we weren't going to get cautions i almost wanted to see what a caution free race would look like to really be able to see strategy play out but you're right, there, there are moments where it definitely got drawn out. And and the late caution towards the end of the race, I think, did make it interesting. But yeah. I don't know. I don't think I hated it from just letting the race be breathe, a, be itself. Be a know? natural race. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I'm a I'm a I feel like that I would fall into that group of being a traditionalist or or man like pure racing. Don't don't manipulate anything. That certainly was what we got on Sunday. Uh, and sometimes races are just going to be that way. You're going to have guys that just drive away, uh, or it's going to be pretty much, you know, a, a uneventful, if you will, not about no, no drama or, or any, you know, any big problems. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. Alex. I, oh, go ahead, Alex. I kind of agree with Andrew a little bit. I, I liked, I liked the strategy part of it because I kind of, what was different about the strategy for for you as a viewer versus I mean there's strategy in the old way of doing it it was you know that you would have people coming down pit road before the caution to to sort of leapfrog some others that were going to stay out for the stage points which is strategy Um, it's a different type of strategy but uh, and we still saw some of that Um, how did you feel like the strategy was so different I just feel like it was because I I, I'm used to seeing that strategy where they come in before the caution, yeah. like, oh, okay. But then, like, the next stage, it'll just flip because those guys know they have a caution. Exactly. I didn't really know how it was going to play out because there is no caution. Like, these guys are fighting for a caution that you don't know is going to happen. Yeah. So when it wasn't planned, I was like, oh, let's see if it works out for them. And it did for most of them at the end. So yeah. it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just – maybe it's more to do with the product and just trying to get that, that car to – to be a more dynamic sort of you know product to watch on the track. Uh, I'll tell you what it has to do with. What is that? If you were broadcasting that race, yeah. you would have loved it. Why? Because you're plugged in so much that you're plugged into the race that the strategic thing is something you guys would do well. Yeah. You would do well. Latart, it's what he is the, the best at. And you guys would be involved in every driver. Whereas watching at home, and in, case, in my case, like I like the strategic thing. I can appreciate that. But I wasn't plugged into the race but because I had a lot of family in town and we were doing different things. And so what you're doing is you're kind of keeping one eye on it and you're just looking for any excitement. Yeah. And there was none in that race with the exception of, you know, Denny crashing and, and um, you know, there was a couple restarts here and there. But the fact of the matter is, is that it did lack that if you weren't going to be completely following everyone's strategic move and pit calls. If you're not going to follow that, it looked just like a race that got strung out. Yeah. So, but like if you if you're broadcasting it, I think you would have loved it. I also want to say this, you know, you were really, and, and and I think you were right in this. But remember, after the Wilkesboro All Star Race, you were you were somber about that race, um, and you're like, you know, God, this is just a, you know, it's like we got to fix this and all this stuff. I noticed that in our YouTube comments, I never really go look at YouTube comments, but a majority of the commenters were like, we like that race. Like, it is, is it, you know, we just appreciated it. We appreciated that it was just one of these old traditional races where yeah. people kind of went out there and they ran and you got the, the winner just kind of just, just yeah. has his way with everybody. Kyle Larson just goes in there and dominates. And so I do think that there's an appreciation for that. Um, and, and you're just certainly going to have your crowd that's just like, entertain me every lap. I, I got to see, yeah, you know, but, pyrotechnics. Yeah. This wasn't that race. It was another butt whooping. 
And so I wish I would, there would have been more excitement in it. But the fact of the matter is, is that I also had, you know, three other things I'm doing at the same time. And so, yeah. you know, what am I going to do? I guess. I mean, you know, I, 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 I know we're not always going to get this, but, the, you know, la the race not having the stage cautions and the race lacking natural cautions, um, the car is pretty, pretty durable. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, it's, it's, you got to really screw up to spin out or, or, or get the car off track or do anything that's going to cause a yellow. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and the guys are, they were, they're aggressive this year, but they weren't wrecking each other, taking each other out. So, I mean, you know, um, we used to see a lot more contact with the old car. It was harder to, to, it was easier to screw up. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it just appears that, you know, this, this car, it's purpose built for road courses, independent rear suspension and all that. Right. So they, it gets around that track better. Um, all those things I think kind of play a big role. The tire barriers down in turn 11, um, easily pushed around. I, you know, I saw the comments and the, or, you know, watching the race. That's always been there. That's oh, always, yeah, that's always been part of it. You know, those damn tires were always moving. Okay. And it changed the line in turn 11. You'd be coming through turn 11 and you're like, oh man, my car ain't handling worth the sh Somebody had hit a tire and move it. And you're like, oh yeah, that was perfect. That helped me. <laughs> that, helped, yeah, that makes my car hurt. You know, we'll get through here way better. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. But uh, they may have beefed up these tires to where now when they hit them, like it's a lot more detrimental to the car because we saw it in Xfinity and in the in the cup race where – uh, you know, any contact with those was a little concerning, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I thought that was, you know, the tire barriers moving around for me has always kind of been part of Sonoma. They're always going to end up somewhere, at, you know, somewhere different by the end of the race. Um, interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought that, but that you would know. Yeah. But it just, it, yeah. Truex dominates again on a road course. Not, not a big surprise there. That's his fourth win there, and yeah. that's something um, he's so good at road courses. I, you know, it's funny. I, you know, I remember, I re I was thinking about that where they keep showing these these graphics of all these guys that are winning road course races, and it's Truex and Chase Elliott and um, and and Kyle Busch. Man, in the eighties, you knew who was good at a road course. It was Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, Ricky Rudd, Terry Lewani was pretty good. There was like two or three guys that were just better. Than all of the other guys out there, like you know, Dad was kind of in that second tier, right? There were about five, maybe five, really good road course racers in 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 the Cup competition in the '80s and early '90s. As we got into these cars, or even back when I was racing toward the end of my career, I wasn't sure that I could pick a guy out of a lineup, right? Mm. That's the road course guy in our group. But apparently, yeah, I got to give Truex credit. I got to give Chase Elliott credit. Those those wins that they racked up wasn't just because they hit on a little secret that nobody else had. Um, I think truly uh, the guys with the most wins, like like Chase and Truex, just had that natural ability to figure out how to get around those places that, that some guys just don't possess. Yeah. It's interesting, too, because I don't know that Truex is honing that craft throughout the year. He just shows up and does it. Natural. Just a lot of people get. like Reddick uh, – He's been going to Trans Am races and driving all, you know, doing everything he can to sort of improve as a road course racer. Um, even Brad Keselowski and, and TJ, they go out to the GoPro once a week and run around that road course just to try to figure out how to become better at turning left and right. Mm. And Truex, to me, goes fishing. And when it, Sonoma rolls around, he walks in with his damn helmet bag, climbs in and kicks everybody's ass. It's the most fascinating thing I think going on right now in terms of road course racing, uh, because I and I know I don't believe that Chase really does a lot of extra work to try to get better at road course racing. It's just like a, a natural ability, right? Yeah. Probably same for Kyle Busch. He's busy dirt racing and doing all kinds of crazy things with his son Brexton and having a great time. I don't. He he might be doing a little Trans Am work with. You know, with with Austin Dillon, I think I saw him doing a little bit of that in the off season, but I don't think he's doing a bunch of sim and stuff to try to be a better road course racer. He's not going to Bondurant and all these places to road course schools. Uh, they're just immensely talented. You would agree also that 
some people, not all of them, but some people probably tend to overthink it. And I think back to when you and Steve Latart decided <laughs> yeah. to forget testing, yeah. forget all this work, extra work. We're just going to show up as whatever. Yeah. And that's when you ended up getting top five and having your best finish at Sonoma. Yeah. I think we worked too hard and we over, you know, we did go to all these tests and just beat our heads against the ground and trying to figure out how to get faster and be better and understand what's going on. And it, I think for me, it, it was more, it confused things even more. Right. When we said, you know what, we're going to, this year, we're going to work ourselves to death for nothing to go out there and, and, and crash into a tire barrier and finish 15th. We're going to show up, have a good time, go to dinner, enjoy the area, and practice and race. The closest you can get to not giving a damn yeah. without no, not and I'll taking be honest, your job seriously, but when, when they I, went there not, not giving a damn. <laughs> and what happened when I got in the car for the first practice, Mike? I was so freaking eager and fired up to drive and, mm. and go out there and, and figure it out as opposed to having tested our guts out and, you know, study, 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 show up, and you're like, I'm freaking a little bit burned out on this shit, and I'm not even run a practice lap yet. Right. You know? And then the car's, you know, you're nitpicking every little thing the car's doing, and you're just frustrating your weekend more. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a unique approach uh, for sure. And I wouldn't be opposed to it if I was even, you know, working with my guys, you know, uh, here at Junior Motorsports. You know, I don't know. Sometimes preparation – is important sometimes sim work and all that stuff is important other times almost think that you're working yourself to death for no reason yeah you know eric amarola goes out there and, and beats kyle larson and aj Allmendinger in the xfinity race i think that was the biggest surprise of the weekend i mean eric was fast all weekend qualified well ran well in the race he you know his team got him in a good position to where he could you know he could take advantage of what was happening on the racetrack around him um, and when he did get the lead, he was he was fast. Larson was a little bit quicker, but banged his car up a little bit. Uh, there was some contact with uh, with um, who the hell was it? AJ. AJ yeah. that bent the splitter. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you, man, his car was never the same after that. Um, and so you wouldn't think something like that could you know, as fast as his car was, as good as he was, you didn't think something like that could really make that big of a difference, but. He lost a lot of a lot of speed, and I think also just being in a little bit of that dirty air behind uh, Eric's car, and Eric's car just got so good right there at the end. Um, good job by Eric, man. He needs that. Was, Another it, guy that just showed up to have fun yeah. in that race, like you know. Again, I've been seeing him, man. He's been getting a lot of hard. He's been getting a lot of flack. He's been getting some criticism for, for how sure. they perform on the Sunday. Yep. But if you, I mean, outside of Harvick, SHR is struggling right now. Yep. As a group, they are having a hard time figuring this thing out. And so, you know, he's not running any worse than any of his other teammates outside of Harvick. You know, Harvick and, and Rodney Childers, they're an anomaly. They're going to always be one as, they're, as long as they're together. Um, but when you look at the rest of that group at SHR, I think, you know, Eric's, Eric's just not benefiting from, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, that whatever's ailing that organization is, is, is making it difficult for all of those drivers. And so... Eric gets out of the car. I loved it, man. He gets out of the car and stands on Victor and he goes, I know it's just an Xfinity race. I was like, man, I know exactly the way he, you know, you can, you know, ex when a, somebody gets out and just talks gen genuinely and, 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 and he, he was so happy to be there. Yeah. So happy to have something to be happy about. Right. <laughs> and his kids, right. I was watching his uh, kids run up to the car and I'm like, damn right. I'm like, Getting to win a race and for your kids to – they go to every – almost every race, right? His kids are there watching that Sunday performance week in and week out. And they believe in their dad. They love him. They think that he's the greatest race car driver out there. And they watch that frustration and that struggle. And they watch him bring it home and deal with it the best he can. And they finally got to have their day. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just an Xfinity race, like Eric said – it's still an, a, a moment of celebration and elation that those kids are going to remember forever. 